Okay, we just yellow blaze another 15 miles over the worst part of the trail, hopefully. And here we are in uh, Delaware Water Gap. Well, it's a little anticlimactic to uh, come to this point by cab because uh, it was going to be a big milestone for me to hike into Delaware Water Gap, where for many years I've, I've commuted through this area and seen hikers, and I was just so damn impressed, thinking, wow, to actually hike all this way from Maine, that would be something. You must be an awesome hiker by the time you get here. Out here in New Jersey, first of all, I guess you're not allowed to camp anywhere. Only in designated areas. And uh, you can't have a campfire, period. None. And uh, you're supposed to use these bare boxes, but I haven't seen any. Well, there were some down below where you're not supposed to camp, but there's none here that we can find. How far away were they? Oh, like when we started coming up. Oh, well, I'm not, yeah, that was like four miles away. Yeah. Mohican Outdoor Lodge. Is this state run? Uh, it's run by AMC. Happiness is a Mountain Dew. I'm back in the kilt, which is a wonderful thing to wear in the summertime. It's very airy and breezy and cool. And I'm just enjoying this ridge here. As you can see, out there is a Greater New Jersey. Breeze. Yeah, the breeze is nice. I think it's a cross between a pickerel and a muscalunger, right? Actually, there's no such thing as muscalunger. What the hell is this? Do you notice? I walk right by <laughs> He walks right by and doesn't even notice. It's a pickaxe. I did not even see that damn thing. How the hell? I feel like King Arthur. Well, you look, you know what? Actually, you look more like Mountain Man. Uh, Grizzly Adams. Yeah, Grizzly Adams. You know that sidekick with the, with the mule? Come on, number seven. I'm going, I'm going, whoa, let me get out of the way. There's gold in that Mary Hills. All right, very nice. There's supposed to be tons of bears out here. Like more bear per square mile in New Jersey than anywhere else. Well, maybe I luck out and see one, get to film it.
<laughs> this is the effects of coffee on Yazzie. <coughs> hey, 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 I had a lot of caffeine this morning and a, and a, and a, and a, and a, and a, and a coffee. <laughs> What you got there? Big old pile of bear poop. Just trying my foot in there for a little perspective. Gyps Tavern. Probably not even open. What do you mean? It's almost 10. It's like the alcoholics got to start their day, you know? See the sign below it? For sale by owner. That doesn't mean it's closed. What you sell a shirt for? You can have it, dude. Really? I'll give you five bucks just for the sake of my girlfriend's and trail name was Genuine Drafts. So. I thought you'd just buy me a beer. Done deal. It says spigot at north side of vacant white house. Uh, this looks pretty vacant. See how there are weeds in the, in the middle of the driveway here. I think that should be the vacant house. Okay. Yeah, just before Boiling Springs, there's a place called Whiskey Springs Road, and there's a nice water pipe that comes out to the road, and I cook supper there. And I went up above the cliffs, and I usually don't camp near a road alone as a woman, but I was not in the camping area, and I was already on the trail about 200 yards from the road, and uh, uh, Bones came along, and he camped uh, 50 yards from me, and so I felt pretty safe, and we, uh, we had an, uh, a pleasant evening and went to sleep pretty early. At 3 in the morning to 3.15, there was this blazing fire that woke me up and cursing. And there was two guys out there cursing their little lungs out. And uh, I thought of calling the police with my cell phone, but if the, I could hear them so distinctly, they'd hear me. And they clearly didn't see me. I heard them talking, and um, they were going to try to intrude upon one of their sisters who lived in Carlisle. They didn't have any backpacks or anything with them. They uh, had the fire was roaring without a fire <coughs> ring. Their obscenities were nonstop. And unbeknownst to me is they had gone over and shook. I heard that they saw Bones' tent. They shook it, and they were looking for a woman. And uh, Bones never went to sleep that night. He never went to sleep. He had, he's a late stayer-upper, and he was just about to go to sleep when they started the fire. And um, in, the, in the morning, I woke up pretty early. I was going to find out where they were sleeping and wake them up, but they were gone. Does this make you think twice about camping so near a road again? 
Well, I, I always thought twice about camping near a road. Uh, unless I'm um, with some other people, it's better not to, and it's better not to for anybody anyway. Just out of town, out of uh, Green Wood Lake, after going to New York City. And uh, that's the climb ahead, 900 feet up a cliff, it looks like, which should be switchbacked. Otherwise, it'd have to be a ladder. Get a film of them. Today is the day I ditched the cannibal. Why do you ask? Because he's getting on my nerves. He's a fast hiker, but he only does it in short bursts and then he stops. So I'm gonna do, a mile ago, uh, there, was a, there was a turn for water that everybody in his right mind should have stopped for, but I did not. I'm gonna walk nine miles without water just to get a little head start on him. I'm also hiking a lot faster than I normally do. When I get to the dairy store, I'll stop and get some water real quick. Maybe some ice cream. He's a nice guy. But uh, I came to this trail to hike alone and I haven't even gotten the chance yet. I've gone all morning without water. It's been almost four hours. Now, uh, shit, there's supposed to be a road here, but there isn't, it's just a pipeline. I still, when I get to the road, I still have to go left one and a half miles. Okay, that's four hours, no water. Going on four and a half. Okay, so I stopped off and had a milkshake and two sodas. <clears throat> and there's water coming up in two miles. So I figured I would just keep walking without water to save and wait. And the quality of the water is better in the woods anyway. Yeah, I should have known <coughs> that sodas and ice cream would just leave me more thirsty. I am dying of thirst. Go a long way now. <coughs> Get me off these rocks already. I want shade and water. Hopefully soon. 
It's supposed to be open till 5.30. It's only, it was only 4.30 or 4.40 when I came by, you ass wipes. Thanks a lot. Trail magic. Soft, <clears throat> soft bed. This was unexpected. So I'm out of the hostel. The best trail magic I've ever seen. And uh, there's some trail markers here, but I don't see a trail. It's just a big jungle of rocks. These trail angels are just something else, you know. The, uh, the springs are all drying up. In fact, the next eight miles this probably doesn't have much water at all. I've learned one important lesson. Camel up while you can. I was expecting to go to a water source. Two of them may be dry. I thought maybe the third would be okay, but I'm not taking the chance. I'll go ahead and take a couple liters now while I, while I can. of yesterday I'm feeling uh, not up to hiking very much had a bloody nose uh, bad case of diarrhea which happens when I get stressed out so my body's shutting down I've got six miles well five miles to go so I'm just gonna go ahead and hike very slow for an hour take a break for half an hour cool off, hike again. It'll probably take me four or five hours to go six miles today because I I feel that I'm at the edge of something I don't want to cross into. So I'll just take it nice and easy. I bet all day I only have six miles to go to the Franciscan Monk Monastery where they'll put you up for the night. I'm down in some park near New York City, very, it's Saturday, very crowded, lots of hikers. Met some Russians, met some day hikers, and as you can see, the trail's not all just trail. There's a few roads you follow too, which I'm not complaining about. tell from my face but I'm completely whipped uh, I shouldn't have tried to hike in this heat even 85 90 is, is too much so from now on it's gonna be early morning late afternoon I'm gonna try do a minimum of 10 maximum of 15 until this heat passes otherwise I'm gonna kill myself I almost threw up today st. Anthony is my patron saint that's a good omen, if you can call it an omen. No one, well, no one's ever told me that New York is hard. I, I mean, yeah, it's, I just, no I just one think has ever, I've, you always hear about Pennsylvania, you never hear about New York. I know. New York's a surprise. It's, it's hard.
it's only about 90, maybe 92. There's a little bit of a breeze, so it's tolerable. I'll be glad to get out of New York, though. It's not, uh, it's not a fun place to be, really, not in this heat. Okay, it looks like there's some kind of a picnic going on here. I was fortunate enough to stumble upon. And down uh, down in Virginia, where you look for, where, let me see, Shenandoah National Park, where you're on the trail, and you see um, Peaks of Dan, when you see the Peaks of Dan. Well, whoever was designing the trail, they were goofing on Avery, and they, they went down there, and they figured, well, we're running over Peaks of Dan just for the hell of it. So they told Avery, and Avery's like, yeah, that's fine with me. <laughs> and that's, that's why it went over the Peaks of Dan years ago, because you decided it was a great idea. Yeah, well, what the hell? I thought it was like a rivalry who could make the trail, you know. The worst the possible worst. location, yeah. Maybe today I'll have a salmon wrap. If you mix it with some mayo or whatever, I'm sure it's a lot. mayo. Yeah. Mayo packets. Otherwise it's dry as hell. You can get one more tar sauce packet, too. Tar sauce is good. If I see any in town, I'll... I'll tar sauce, it's just, it's just mayonnaise and relish. Yeah. I've made my own with a mayonnaise and a relish packet before, too. If I happen to see any where I'm going, I'll pick some up for you. Yeah? If I, yeah. Thanks, man. Yeah, I like, I like the tar sauce. <laughs> I'll, even, I'll even stop and make a ramen for a snack if I have enough water. Yeah, that's the been... only thing with ramen though. I, I like feel like it doesn't take much water because to cook it, then after you eat one of those things, it's so salty you gotta chug like half a liter. Yeah, uh huh. End up using a lot of water. I'm not having a very good day. I'm not feeling very good and very energetic. I haven't felt good in many days. Probably because I'm not eating enough. I think it's important to know why you're not feeling well. This is Nuclear Lake, and if it's not too weedy and muddy and skanky and nasty, I'm gonna go jump in the Nuclear Lake and bring my laundry with me. Good morning, sun, riding on the waves. Good morning, sun, cruising on those waves, evening Light my path along the way, God is smooth. Show me what you got to say. Okay, that's Dover Oak. Oldest tree on the trail. 300 years old. As you can tell from all the garbage in here, this shelter is um, very close to the road where the party people come to make a mess and get drunk. I grew up in New York, took my foot first steps in New York, had my first beer in New York. Ow! And I'm so glad to be out of freaking New York. Can't even tell you. So, Moncaton is only 735, 32 miles, 30 miles, probably by now, by this taping, left. So I've come two-thirds of the way. And, uh... If you're expecting to somehow become some miracle hiker and everything is just easy, think again. It's never easy.
stare at it, there's nothing else to do Oh, it's in color Your hair is brown Your eyes are hazel And soft as clouds I often kiss you when there's no one else around Nobody here at the rectory right now. It's uh, five, almost six o'clock. I can't go on. I've had two sakis and I'm full and I'm tired. So I'm just gonna lay here for a while and see if somebody shows up. actually part of the AT. It's not a blue blaze. It's just a nice flat country road. I thought you were ahead of me somehow. Kent, Kent sucked me in. You were hanging out in Kent all day, huh? Yeah. That's cool. That's Have fun. Mingled with the locals. Found the local spot in town. One, there's one place I went in. They wouldn't let me bring my pack in, so I was like, eh. I go somewhere else. I get nervous like that. We went outside, like a restaurant. Yeah. If I do that, I'll, I'll be right at the window looking at it or something. Yeah, but that, I, so I moved on, and I think the spot that I moved on to ended up being a better time, anyways. It's time to do another tick treatment. There's a guy, Curtis, who just told us that uh, if we go to the uh, Cornwall package store, tell them we're AT hikers, we get a free beer. And he recommended we get the biggest one they have, which is the Foster's. Tall boy, so that's where I'm going. That's what I'm getting. And I'll pack it out. Your, what's your trail name? Jun Kim. Jun Kim, where are you from? You. South Korea. Uh, I, I I I came America second time. Okay. Yeah. Uh, last time I, I uh, went uh, hike uh, together my uh, sister or older sister in Bear Mountain. Oh, okay. Yeah, in New York. So how did that's where you learned about the AT? Yeah. Okay. So I I I, I check up the in, in, internet and I saw the how how far how uh, something like that so. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm just thinking I can do this. So let's see a happy face. This is bliss right now, as much bliss as I can show on my face. Well, that's <laughs> after almost 1,500 miles of hiking. There's not much left. Yeah. There's just plain desire. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was a very, very rainy night last night. I'm glad to say I was snug as a bug in a rug. The lightning was intense. I've never actually in my whole life seen that much lightning. It was like somebody, someone flickered the lights on and off every two seconds. The thunder came crashing, rolling, ripping across this mountain 
for 20 miles. This is Maria. This is the famous hostelier yeah. here in Connecticut. In uh, what's the name of this town? I forget. Salisbury. Salisbury, yeah. How long have you been doing this, Maria? About 15 years. And uh, Sie sprechen Deutsch? Yeah, I've heard, and uh, you told me a story that back in, f I don't know when it was, 44, you were, a you were uh, hitchhiking through Italy and you saw Mussolini hanging upside down. In, in Milano. In Milano. With his girlfriend. From what I'm gathering from all the, the journal entries, you seem to have the best place to stay. I hope so. Well, not just the place, but the person. Yeah. You're definitely the nicest. Thank you. That's nice of you to say that. Last night you took us to the uh, laundromat, and then we had some pizza, and you sat. You came right in and sat with us, and, yeah, and we were talking. Yeah, I sat with the hikers always. Yeah, it was really nice. Always. They're my, you know, they're my friends. Like my kids say, you think more of the hikers than you do of your own kids. I said, yeah, if you believe. That's not true, but I treat them. You know, I, you are away from home, you know, quite a ways away, and it'd be nice to meet some old lady that takes care of you like a mother hen. So I've, yeah, I've run back into uh, who else but Lemur and MacGyver. <laughs> and they're still on the trail and still married. <laughs> and, along, yes, and not just still married, but happily married. Yes. And uh, pushed each other off the cliff yet or anything. You guys are, you're telling me, in all honesty, that you're feeling a little sick of hiking which yeah. which I think everybody is at this point I know I am a little done at getting up every day and walking like it's our job but you're gonna do it anyway yep. Yep. <laughs> you, your deadline is uh, September 15th it is we're gonna try and finish earlier if we get there earlier so you got not, the, your minimum is 13.8 or something like that. like that every day yeah well you'll 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 make it you're the you should be in the best shapes of your lives if unless yeah, you were already sure. marathon runners or something <laughs> In the beginning, I lost, what, six, six pounds, Something like that. and I've probably gained three of those back, so... Because they say women don't yeah, lose a tons of weight. Yeah. How about how about you, MacGyver? Do I'm you... down ten, maybe.
that's the biggest corn I think I've ever seen. It's got to be eight feet, nine feet high. I'll give you a, a perspective here. That's me, and that's the corn. This is Upper Goose Pond. I'm looking for Upper Goose Pond Cabin. I hear they serve breakfast, uh, pancakes for breakfast, which I of course can't eat. But if I could just have some maple syrup on my spam, I think I'd be happy. I am very tired. It's starting to get colder at night. Last night was probably 58. I was in the cabin, they had a fire, I was warm. Didn't sleep for shit though because uh, people were snoring and actually mosquitoes were inside. And I keep telling myself, don't sleep in the cabin, don't sleep in the cabin. You got a hammock, use the hammock. But no! Oh, it looks like a really good place to sleep. So I sleep, and then I don't sleep. So uh, I probably got two hours of sleep last night. Um, I'm gonna try to make it to the to the bird cage today. That's in Dalton. That's 20 miles away. Um, I have one more day's worth of food. I got four Cliff Bars and two tunas and some crackers. My uh, my macadamia nuts are rancid. Well, I'm on. Mile 17 of my 20 mile day from Goose Pond Shelter. And my feet really hurt bad. Normally 15 is about my limit. But uh, the terrain was conducive to a 20 and I really had no choice. Because I'm out of food. I have never played the trumpet until Waynesboro in Virginia. But you would walk into camp and just kind of like make a horn sound. Yeah, I would be walking into camp whistling or, uh, you know, just... So they sent you, they mailed you this horn. Yeah, uh, a couple people back in, uh, way back in the Smokies wanted to call me Hornswoggle or Hornsby. And I was, didn't really like the name. And then in right before the Shenandoah National Park and, uh, Waynesboro, they mailed me this trumpet, and so I kind of take the name now. Not bad, man. I'm in the... I'm in St. Mary's Church Parish Hall in one of the hiker rooms. Okay, I had a pretty good night's sleep last night. Sleeping on the floor. I was so tired from last night, the, the night before that I just went right to sleep. So maybe look at this as uh, the ultimate freedom to be able to hike the Appalachian Trail. No worries, no, no burdens. You may want to get out right now. I want to get in. When it's raining, I want in. You may want to get out of your job and go walking in the woods for a while to get away. I want to get out of the woods and get into a living room with a TV and a carpet. Life is a sentence unto itself and we're all prisoners of it one way or another. There really is no... I've, I'm not finding in my life anyway and what I'm observing in most people's lives. There is no 100% pure bliss. What I find is contentment, and contentment is my happiness. I find that um, I'm content with what I have, and uh, I'm happy with what I have, and I'm happy with today, and whatever comes tomorrow is not a really all that much in my control anyway. You can plan 
your whole financial future, you can plan your retirement, you can plan your health care. But funny things happen that are out of your control. I'd like to go to North Adams. We can do that, certainly. Uh, 220? Uh, it'll be 220. <laughs> Take the right in the post office. That's the court, the chimney into it. Oh, okay. Right there, so it's just up and around. Well, I made my 10 miles for the day. I just went to Friendly's and I had some ice cream, chocolate shake, and the Coke. And now I'd really like to go bowling. But. So I guess I'll go hiking. I'm running out of warm things to wear. I had to put my wet stuff on this morning and I'm also putting my kilt on, which actually works pretty well as a little cape. And it's just enough to keep me warm at about 60 degrees. Now that the trail is so damn muddy, I take every opportunity that I can to take alternate routes. I'm on a uh, dirt road walking next to a beautiful stream and uh, to tell you the truth, I'd rather be here any day. The first man who ever hiked the Appalachian Trail, Earl Schaefer, hiked most of it down in the valleys on roads. Well, these days I'm doing uh, Neato, which is a whole milk powder, Kiko, instant breakfast. Shake it up in my Tiger Woods, my Tiger Woods uh, sport drink bottle. I only plan on doing 10, 12 miles. It's a lot of ups and downs. It's also muddy. And I'm not in a much of a hiking mood, so we'll see how it goes. And now we finally enter New England proper. What's New England proper to me? These uh, spruce trees. Ah, you can smell them. And uh, ferns and moss. Well, it looks like I'm the only one here right now, but it's only uh, 7 o'clock. I'm sure there'll be lots of people coming by. Honestly, I hope they don't because I could stand a little privacy, just, just some solitude. That's what I came here for. That's what I came to the trail for. I'm too lazy to put up my hammock tonight. I think I'll just put the mat out and, uh, and sleep in the shelter. Hopefully uh, I can do that without losing too much sleep. I'm uh, feeling uh, content with walking. Some people I've talked to say they're going absolutely crazy, not being able to do anything but walk. And if they don't have a book to read, they go ape shit. I feel uh, pretty at peace with the trail. Most people don't realize, and most Catholics don't realize, is a, a pillar of the Catholic Church. 
which I am, I'm a devout Catholic. Uh, detachment from the world, love of poverty, love of the poor. So that's really what I'm working at here. It's part of the reason I'm hiking is, is uh, seven months of prayer, detachment, fasting in a way. Really, this is a fast. I'm losing weight. And uh, so it's a spiritual trip for me as well as a, an adventure and a, a, uh, an achievement. I hear you tape your nipples. <laughs> yes, I bandaged them. They hurt, they chafe. It's a vicious cycle. They chafe, they get more sensitive, and they chafe even easier. So it's not funny, it's a problem. It's hilarious. It's a serious problem. So you, uh, you, you've got sensitive nipples, and I have uh, sensitive nipples. Maybe a very rough shirt. They get oh, it just gets wet. Gets wet and it chafes. And it chafes. So you tape them. Bandage them. With what? Bandage. Bandage. Oh, <laughs> I thought maybe try some moleskin. On my nipples. That blue blaze was so perfect, I couldn't have uh, asked for more. It cuts four miles off the AT, and then uh, if I still have time, I might make a few more miles after that and be within striking distance of Manchester. In the end, you gotta hike your own hike, and you gotta be happy with what you do, and I have not, I have not been happier since I found that little trail, and I'm on this road now, and I'm, I'm out of the mud. This is a uh, secret hostel, undisclosed name, undisclosed address, and undisclosed telephone number, word of mouth only, completely, absolutely free. I may or may not have a bed, but I don't really care. They'll uh, basically just put you up for the night for free. One more big perk is that uh, the hikers that left everything, I now get to uh, enjoy including all the sodas I want. What's your full trail name? Oh, K1YPP. And that's your radio, that's your ham radio. radio. Kilo One, Yankee Papa Papa. And you've been in radio one way or another for many, many years. Since 1962. You're hiking the trail with your ham radio. Yes, I am. In fact, unveil. This, this radio would have been the envy of the Russian spies probably 20 years uh, 40 years ago, 30 years ago. But today, I mean... This is something you made from this, from scratch, pretty much? No, this one here is actually a kit. The one I was carrying last year, I designed from the ground up. And it weighed two and a half pounds, something like that. And when one of my ham radio friends read my journal and about you know, the heart problems I had and all, he, he designs a kit you can buy and build. You can't buy them assembled. His name is Slow Going. He's a hiker also. He designed this one that he sells, and it's called the AT3A Appalachian Trail. Does everybody still do oh, more? Sure, sure. Is that the, the definition of ham, or can you do it with voice? No, in fact, today it's not required. Up until about three or four years ago, it was required to learn Morse code worldwide. You have to pass a test? Ham. Yeah, but not anymore. It's shortwave. This one covers the 80 meter band, the 40 meter band, the 30 meter band, and the 20 meter band. Awesome, look at that. And you tune it by tuning up or down in frequency, just like you would tune up. This one allows you to listen on one frequency and then transmit on a separate one. Sometimes people are a little off. And this one here is like a program menu. You can tell it, you can set your code speed, how fast you want to send, because it'll make your dots and your dashes automatically. You just tell it how many with the paddle. Da, 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 So you don't have to sit there, da, da, So you don't get tendinitis from... Yeah, yeah. What year do you think these are? Bean, or cashews and stuff. The ones that get me are, you need any brown powder? Well, Very yes. important. Brown powder, you need brown powder. This particular hiker box does not have an adequate supply of white powder. I ran out of brown powder just uh, two days ago. Now, the brown powder is great, but the white powder could be 
pancake mix, flour, sugar, cornstarch, cocaine. Which is also known as Bolivian marching powder. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, and, and the other important thing is you have to cook the white powder, the brown powder, and sometimes you can mix it. So you need an almost empty propane canister to cook them with. Yes, and if I collect five of them, I can make a meal. That's right. You might even and ketchup, you need, you know. I, I was, in glass. Yeah. Oh, of course it's glass. I, I was looking in one, two different hiker boxes, one in Irwin, Tennessee, I forget where the other one was. They had 10-pound bags of dried beans. Black beans was one of them, white beans was the other. 10 pounds. I mean, you have to soak those. You have to cook them forever. Who, who in their right mind has a 10-pound bag in, in their backpack of... Not since the Oregon Trail. <laughs> yeah, you need a Conestoga wagon to carry them around. You know? So today I decided to uh, avoid the mud again and try hiking the uh, train tracks. It's only like 15 miles of this. And if it sucks, I'll never do it again. Okay, I made it to Otter Creek Campground. Uh, I walked about three quarters, 80% of it. I gotta admit, I somebody offered me a ride the last few miles into town. And uh, it was like two more miles into town and Otter Creek was three more past that. So I was very fortunate to actually get the ride. These two trees here are perfect for hammocking and we're in business. This is the hammock house that I have. It cost me $180 and it's paid for and I don't pay any taxes on it. Which is nice, so I got that going for me. <laughs> and uh, then I usually go ahead and clean the toes, clean them between my toe jam toes like that. Just kind of wipe off the toe jam, give them a crack. After a whole day of being in boots, my little footsies are very happy. And here we are, it's all set for the evening. I got my clothing bag underneath me, underneath my head for a pillow. I got my water bottle in case I get thirsty. I have this uh, hanging bag here, which has a cliff bar and my book in there so I can read. Somewhere around here I've got a uh, flashlight or a headlamp. Here it is. A headlamp that I uh, pull out at night. And I hang that over the, uh, the ridge line like so. See? Not really all that much to see right now anyway. for almost killing me.
what a beautiful day. August 18th. We just got a ride up from town. Nice retired army dude. And uh, wow, things are going well. What a beautiful day. I think I'm really gonna look forward to uh, the rest of Vermont, New Hampshire. Really spectacular right here. And I know, I'm having hiked for some of it myself already in the past. graduated to dinner. What's your dinner? We are going to have four cheese bow tie combined with tuna, thicken it with some mashed potatoes, and of course, um, Tony's seasoned salt with tortillas. I'm jealous. I can have a Sounds segue good. to the story about the bear earlier. I was at Walnut Shelter that was right outside of Hot Springs. That's uh, down, down in North Carolina. There were about five of us at the shelter, and oh, at about eight o'clock at night, hear the rustling in back of the shelter and said, oh God, there's gotta be the bear that everybody was talking about. It was in the journal. People said, has come, taken food bags. And of course, lo and behold, we all walk around the side of the shelter. The bear is right there. So we threw rocks at it and tried yelling at it, waved our poles at it. About two hours after we started to like fend this thing off, it finally got bored and ran away. Went right down the trail about a mile. Went to a campsite where three other people were tented, ripped their tents to shreds, took their food bags, and when we, when we walked down the hill and got to the tent site, all you saw was little pieces of like nylon all over the place. So Whoa. they had a bad night. So he he went into the, he attacked the tent while they were in it. Yeah, yeah. Holy one of the Christ. guys was in the tent when when it attacked. That's a pant shitter. And but nobody has to worry about the bear anymore because three strikes and you're out. They sent some hunters out and boom, capped it. Yeah.